Hey guys, John here. Welcome to the series, How to Use LuxVerb. This is video one, and this is gonna be more so an introduction and an overview of what this is. So this is the new reverb that ImageLine has introduced in FL Studio 21. Now this reverb is kind of cool because there's a lot of different things that you wouldn't normally expect a reverb to have, and it does sound pretty good. So for this demonstration and for most of the course, I've decided to use a saw wave in pigments here that's just getting sent to the reverb itself. And the reason for that is because a saw wave has a lot of harmonic content. So we can really see what a reverb is doing. And later on, we can also use different types of sounds because sometimes reverbs can sound better on different instruments and so on and so forth. But we're going to get to that throughout the course. So for now, we just have a saw wave here. Let's turn this off for one second here. So we have a dry saw wave and on the default preset here, if we select default again and turn on a reverb, it's gonna sound like this out of the box. So very interesting. So we have the first section here, the input, and we're gonna go over all these sections throughout the course, but kind of the main stuff here, we have our decay how long that reverb goes. And then our size, diffusion. These ones here, these brightness and character, we're gonna spend more time on these because they're kind of a little bit more involved. So we kind of need to explain those a little bit more. This mod amp and mod, mod frequency, kind of the same deal. But just to kind of show you a little bit here. kind of a crazy reverb tail for that. So we're gonna dive in and talk all what this does and how to uh, make it make some cool patches with that. So going back to our default here, in this feedback section, this is also very interesting because we can change the, sh the, the pitch of the reverb tails, which is very cool sounding. So if you turn this on by default, and you're not really noticing anything, this, this gain slider right here is gonna be down. So kind of bring this up and see what's gonna be happening here. You kind of hear how that pitch is changing up here. Let's bring our decay up a little bit here and bring a little bit more of the wet signal so we can kind of really hone in on that. So very cool sounding right here. Let's stop this tail here and let's go back to our default here. And then we have our general output section and this spot's pretty cool here. This peak freak and peak gain and peak Q. It's kind of like having a resonance knob with different widths and gain on a, on a reverb, which is kind of interesting. So a quick demonstration of this here. Let's turn this up quite a bit so we can really kind of exaggerate to hear what's going on here. And you can see here in the spectrum view, it's kind of doing almost what we would expect a resonance to do on a typical synth, kind of if we dialed up Harmer or something like that and cranked up the resonance and uh, kind of swept the frequency and kind of seeing this, this cutoff move. So kind of think of this in a weird way as a cutoff of a synth and then this gain here is how much of that resonance amount you want. And this cue is kind of the bandwidth of that. So if we have this very narrow, we can see all these moves that we're doing down here. So it's very cool to have in a reverb here. And we're gonna talk about that in a later video, but I just thought I'd mention it, mention it in this uh, video here. So you kind of know what's gonna be coming up. And next up, we have this envelope, which is interesting too, because if we turn this on, for example, the, the wet signal right here, we can dial in an envelope. And as you can see here, we can almost modulate the, the, the wet signal and the decay. So you can make gated type of reverbs or the opposite. So you could almost have like, if there's percussion stuff going on, you can have the notes, once they hit with the percussion, there's not gonna be much reverb, but once the note is let go, then the reverb kind of comes in. So the in-between spots of percussive stuff is really gonna be where the reverb shines. And you can do all that stuff with, with this uh, reverb here. So it's very cool. It's a very cool, uh, I keep wanting to say synth, but uh, it's a very cool reverb and it's very exciting to have and it sounds great. So moving on from this here, let's kind of check out some of the presets it comes with because there's quite a lot. If we could click this list, we have an envelope section, we have a hall section, we have pitch shift, we have plate, and then we have room. So a couple of these, uh, these envelopes here, let's go for a gate, bright, and boomy. 
So you see what I'm say saying here is once we hold down a note here, we can see that the reverb's going. And when we let go, it turns off. So this envelope is controlling this decay signal right here. And up here, we can see these different colors is kind of telling us what these things are. So this blue line down here is going to be the envelope. The threshold is going to be this orange. The wet signal is the green and the decay is the red. And we can see how this decay is moving down as well as the spectrum view showing here. And we can also put on peaks if you didn't know. It's kind of hard to see behind the spectrum. So if we turn the spectrum off, we can see the peaks like that as well to kind of see what's going on. And we also have a meter down here to see the volume, which is going to be based upon this threshold here. So moving on from here, let's check out another one of these presets. So let's look at huge echoey hall in the hall section. Moving on from here, let's check out the pitch shift. And this is some really cool stuff here. This is probably one of my favorite spots of this, uh, this reverb. Like, what is that? And that's really just a saw wave getting fed into this. So imagine the crazy sound design patches you can make that you can then feed into a reverb that sounds like this. Very cool. Let's check out some more of these pitch shifts here. Let's go for Swirly Breakdown. Yeah, that'd be kind of creepy at about 2 in the morning or something like that. So now we have a whole tone climb also in the pitch shift section. That's pretty cool. So there's a lot of these to experiment with. Let's check out some of the plate ones here. So let's go for a dark plate. Can bring up some of the wet gain here. Moving on from dark plates, check another one. Let's try hard plate. Get some more of this wet gain here. Moving on from there, our last section here is going to be the room. So let's try a large bathroom. And like I said before, different signals are going to are going to kind of react differently to different patches on the reverb. So what this may not sound OK on a saw wave may sound great on a vocal or may sound great on a snare drum or a guitar or something like that. So always keep that in the back of your mind, depending on the signal source. And moving on from here, let's try a tiled room. I kind of like that because it kind of gives a uh, an open vibe to to this. So if we turn this off, it's very dry then on. It opens it up a little bit. It almost sounds like there's not really a lot of reverb there, but it's almost like it's there, but it's not there and it feels right. Hope that makes somewhat of sense here. But yeah, so highly suggest to go through these different presets here because there's quite a lot. There's a lot of cool ones in the pitch shift section as well that we kind of went through. And in the future videos that are going to be coming up, we're going to talk about the input and the reverb section, kind of go through every one of these knobs and these uh, these switches here and kind of see what all they do, the feedback output and the envelope section. So look forward to that. Thank you for watching and sticking through through this video and we'll see you in the next one.